Oh, we thought we were rid of Frieza's tyranny. Well, not so. Hey guys, Masako X here. We continue What If Week with a supposition that has been dogging the community of Dragon Ball for the longest time. It's one of those old classic questions, which has really gone off in its own direction now that kind of Bulma takes a backseat in Z. That question is, what if Goku married Bulma? Now this idea isn't as crazy as you might think. There were actually some proper rumours and speculation in the Dragon Ball story that Bulma was attracted to Goku at the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament. She even said so herself, but when she saw the advances of Chi Chi, she thought it might have been for the best that she kind of backed off from Goku and instead settled for Yamcha. Settle, Yamcha, they kind of work hand in hand, don't they? But if you think that Yamcha's been left out in the cold again, then don't worry. He actually managed to find solace in Chi Chi, because remember in the actual story, Chi Chi assumed that Yamcha was going to ask her to marry him, and you know, she turned him down. But in this one, no, she won't. Eh, he's pretty much the same thing in a way. So in terms of these four people, none of them missed out. They found a couple, they managed to settle down, have a family. Yamcha has a successful baseball career, despite the fact he's dead now. Hey, yeah, those baseball cards, they'll be worth a fortune. But all of this changed Gohan somewhat, making him more like Kid Trunks instead of the original Gohan. But another thing that's been important is that the relationship between Gohan and his father Goku is far more developed, much more complex because he's been around his father much more. Piccolo doesn't have to be the father figure. He can just be the lonely slug man out in the wasteland, only having Tom from MySpace for company, like he always wanted. So where are we right now? Well, we are on currently Planet Namek. There is a standoff between Vegeta and Frieza. Now instead of calling the Ginyu Force to settle this mess, Frieza thought it might be best that he personally sorts Vegeta out given the history between the two. And you know, after being so nice to him earlier and sparing his life and all of that, and then Vegeta just throws it back in his face. How dare that prince or whatever. Oh, I'm going to give that little Saiyan twerp a piece of my mind. Now, I'm going to warn you here, the way that things have been written for this part are going to get a little bit zany, but hey, this is Dragon Ball. Zany and it go hand in hand now, don't they? But anyway, let's continue with the story. The stage is set for Frieza to exact his revenge upon Vegeta for crossing the line for the second and last time. Frieza has removed his scouter so that no one may interfere with something he's about to enjoy. He doesn't need anyone else's help anyway, because remember, this is Frieza. Now this is a pretty tight spot here. What do our heroes do? Do they give a character amongst them immortality like Vegeta? Do they wait for Goku to get back? They're, they're kind of stuck. Well, the only thing that they can do is for Nail to step up and try and distract Frieza long enough so that means they can make a wish. Frieza is a little bit taken aback by this, but oh well, I guess killing another useless fool might be a little bit fun before starting with the main course. Eh, why not? But before Frieza goes any further, he looks up and spots Purunga up in the sky and asks, what that dragon? What's it all about? What is that? What even is that? Dende and Gohan look at each other and they just have no choice in this situation. They have to lie the pants off this situation. Uh, it's a, a really big beast threatening to destroy the world and uh, uh, it's gonna come and get us if we don't make him entertain. They hoped that Frieza would be there to actually be their saviour and uh, finish it. He looks up at the beast and muses it over and then promises to destroy this beast after he's done with this Namekian fool. And oh yes, after he's finished Vegeta. And remember, at this point without a scouter, Frieza cannot sense energy, so he can't sense anyone hiding their power levels or running away or anything kind of like that, so he's kind of blind. Nail takes Frieza away to a proper fighting spot and then they asks Gohan what they're gonna do. Well, after some thinking, the only thing that they can really think of doing is to wish Goku here. Maybe he can think of something. Dende quickly gobbles the wish because they don't really have much time, and Purunga then summons Goku to their location, unlike what they did with Piccolo, who's currently somewhere on Nemec. But however, they don't need to do that, because Purunga then tells everyone that Goku is already heading towards the planet. And just as he says this, the shot of a spaceship looms across the sky and lands nearby. 
Vegeta then turns around, thinking that they don't need to waste that wish, and says that you better use that wish on me or so help me! Goku then arrives and immediately spots Vegeta. Ooh, awkward tension after their fight from earlier. Goku's really ready to fight Vegeta. He can sense that he's much stronger than the prince nowadays, and he gets into his stance, but he's stopped by Gohan and Dende saying that they got bigger problems right now. And just as he says this, Goku can sense Freezer's power and goes like, Whoa! Whoa! Look at that power level! That's like, whoa! Goku's really excited and he really wants to know where this guy is. Bulma is there too, and after quickly hugging her husband, slaps him across the face for taking his time. Also, he really has to calm down because they're trying to think of a third wish to use on Porunga. And this is the point where things get a little crazy. Goku then comes up with the perfect idea. Huh, why don't you make some fake Dragon Balls? Everyone is stunned at this idea, most of all Bulma. But then Vegeta says something that, Huh, you know what? That plan might actually work. The reason? Well, Frieza doesn't know what Dragon Balls look like. They could be anything. The only two worlds that have Dragon Balls that they know of are here and the planet Earth. And Earth's not somewhere Frieza's been. Yet. None of the other planets that Frieza has conquered has already got those balls, and all that Frieza cares about these days is basically his stuff. Dende asks them, albeit slightly somberly, if this is actually the wish they're going to use, and everyone has to confirm they haven't got any better ideas. He then asks Purunga to make some fake Dragon Balls, and the dragon weirdly complies with the wish. As Purunga then rises up into the sky, scattering the real balls across the planet, a actual bunch of fake balls replaces where the real balls used to be. And because Purunga wasn't really inclined to do it, the stars on them look really, really tacky. But hey, they're perfect, they're good enough. While the wish is being made, Vegeta then tells Goku more about his Saiyan backstory, and especially, the most important part right now, the Zenkai boost. This is going to be playing a crucial part in order to take down Frieza and they're going to have to work together. And Goku quickly understands and then realises that Back when he was a child and every time he got injured, he'd always end up feeling much stronger once he recovered. So this is the reason why. Vegeta then confirms this and promptly blasts a hole in Goku's chest, leaving him completely winded and, you know, bleeding out. Everyone is left horrified and Vegeta is completely unfazed as he then turns to Dende to ask him to heal him. Dende then complies with this request, albeit being extremely terrified, not sure whether this will actually work, but thankfully for him, it does. Goku then gets back up again, his wound completely healed, and somehow he feels really invigorated. Goku's still pretty angry at Vegeta, but he then begins to understand that this might be the only way they can quickly get powerful enough to take on Frieza. Vegeta then tells Goku to do the same to him, and he does so, with Dende then healing Vegeta. And this goes on for about maybe one or two times until Bulma then just stops and says, please, can you guys just think of a more humane way to get stronger? All the while, Freeze is getting pretty bored of just flying to a location designated by Nail and decides to fight him right then and then in the sky. He doesn't realise that the real Dragon Balls are now inactive and will not be active for another year, so yeah, that danger is gone. With the flick of his tail, he sends Nail flying down to the ground, completely and devastatingly injured. Freeze is very disappointed that this fight was over so quickly, but he feels like he's adequately warmed up now to then take on Vegeta and make it a good one. Now remember, Frieza isn't really a brawler, so this required actual effort. And actual effort is something that Frieza just doesn't do. One blast from his finger is all enough, but this? This is far too much work, he needs to have a relax. When the Emperor arrives, the gang present to him the Dargenballs. Ah, Lord Frieza! Present these Dorgan balls to you, and uh, may your wish be a very good one, and one that benefits you most, oh almighty Lord Freezer. <sighs> Freezer is taken aback by this sudden change of mood, and is immediately suspicious. Why are you sucking up to me, Vegeta? I thought you hated my guts after I, what I did to your people. But hey, come on, it's Dorgan balls, so he's gonna take them regardless. He thanks Vegeta for this and then proceeds to kick him in the gut. Before he heads back to his ship and then out of their sight forever, he turns back to Dende and says, Oh dear boy, tell me, how do you use these exactly? Oh dear, nobody thought about that part of the plan. 
Dende frantically tries to come up with a solution, but Frieza is really impatient now that he's got his Dargan bows, and he then gives the boy a countdown of five to tell him how to do it, or else he's going to kill him. Yep, the plan is falling apart, they have no choice, they've got to attack him. The double team of Goku and Vegeta are just about powerful enough to take on the tyrant together and send him flying for miles, so that means they can now try and think of what to do next. Run away? Stand their ground? Use the dog and bow somehow? As the shooting star of Freezer heads over the Namekian sky, Piccolo encounters Nail's dying body. And, you know, he's just saying, well, oh, this is my people. Huh. I'd expected better. They then go through the whole discovery of the Namekian people, the ultimate solution to fuse their bodies together, and then Piccolo realizing that this is amazing! Frieza, now completely mad as hell, returns to the Guru's tower at full speed, winding Vegeta by punching him in the gut. With them together, things are pretty even, but then Gohan decides to step in and help. Frieza is now against three Saiyans, and this will not do, so instead of going after the adult, he's just going to try and pick up the smaller one, because he does love a small moving target. He then blasts Gohan straight in the stomach and sends him flying over the cliff's edge. But then, Piccolo rises up from the cliff's edge, carrying Gohan. A little nod to the original timeline there, but remember, the relationship between them is next to nothing. And with Nail's protective nature really driving him on, Piccolo is spoiling for a fight. It's now four against one, but Vegeta, thanks to his darn pride, is now not satisfied by this fight at all. He tells Frieza to transform because he's known about that trait all along. Frieza's taken aback like in the original, but he then complies. We then get second form Frieza. Despite the setback, Piccolo still feels confident, and together with Goku and Vegeta, they then decide to carry on fighting Frieza. Eventually, Goku and Vegeta begin to tire out, and then it just becomes a one-on-one -on -one with Piccolo, now all pumped up, motivated, and confident. However, before Vegeta can be fully healed, Frieza then susses out the plan and spots Dende healing everyone in the distance. He then transforms into his third form and blasts away Vegeta and Dende. Goku's power is now up to where it was around after the time he left the medical pod, and Vegeta is now slowly dying, like in the original. Third form Freezer then just thinks that, oh, he doesn't need that boy anyway. He can just gather the balls and go to his scientist and then that will be the end of that. And besides, he's done what he came here to do, kill Vegeta. As he takes away the balls though, Bulma, having sat on the sidelines for the longest time, has had enough. She then shouts up to the tyrant saying that he won't get away with this and that they will stop him. Freezer turns around and is slightly curious. What is this weakling of a subject doing? He decides to make a point and fires a death beam straight through her chest. And this shocks everybody, especially Goku. Goku tries to comfort Bulma, but it's too late. She's gone. An ancient power deep inside Goku has begun to wake up. Goku lets out a powerful scream and his hair turns gold. Yes, that's right. It is now the birth of the legendary Super Saiyan. He recognizes that this power must be really mighty, and he has no choice but to use that form. He lands back down on the ground and praises Goku's tenacity, and he will then oblige the actual monkey by showing a form that he's not shown anyone else before. He then transforms into his final form and promises the monkey one last duel before he blows him and the planet up, and then he can be done with everything. He doesn't need these Dragon Balls, forget them. He wants to get these guys off his back. And I think this is where we'll leave things for now. I'm sorry if this got a little bit more detail than previous What If parts, but I felt that there was a lot of nuance here that needed to be conveyed for going forward. And the way that Bulma died and the fact that this was so unexpected might actually yield better results for Goku in terms of his strength and volatility. How will this fight go and how will Vegeta end up? Might he actually pull through after all, much like Piccolo in the original? We shall have to wait and see. So what did you guys think? Did you like this part? Do you think Frieza reacted the right way? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later!